Hi, in this video I will compare thermal conductivity of some fabrics that I have made. But first of all, this is my setup. I'm using infrared heating element as a heat source. Heat is transferred by radiation to test subject and it is sunk through a wooden resistor, let's call it, to aluminum brick and finally to ambient air. This setup is not really perfect, but all I want is consistency during these few measurements, so should be pretty good for that. My goal is to develop material that has very similar thermal conductivity to lining of ceramic hot plate heating element. However, I want it to be castable and with better mechanical stability. Ok, so let's start with this block of sand fused with sodium silicate. After I start heating, I will wait for temperature to stabilize. Here I found out that when the thermocouple lead is hot, temperature reading is lower, so in the next test I will insulate the probe wire. This one is gypsum mixed with calcium silicate. I've got gypsum formula wrong there, so... It is not very suitable for high temperatures, but the results are interesting nonetheless. This is alumina mixed with calcium silicate and fused with sodium silicate. I expected this to be much better, but... Hey, this is why I'm doing this test after all. This brick is made of commercial mortar and calcium silicate mix. Mortar composition was about 6 to 4 silica to alumina, with about 3% of titanium dioxide fused with sodium silicate. Seems nice, I think that the temperature is still not quite settled though. This sample is interesting because it has same composition as previous one, but it has very different structure. So yeah, there's one clue. This sample is commercially available pumice, also not quite suitable for high temperatures, but it has definitely some interesting properties. Now high temperature sealant clay with calcium silicate. Very poor performance and very poor quality mixture. Finally we measure our target temperature and... Wow, I am impressed. Ok, so we are nowhere near. Ok, so here are the bricks and approximate delta T from our target along with block density. Now I don't know about you, but I really cannot see any trend so far. I guess let's move on to inspect some mechanical properties. Pumice, you probably know this material well, at least you can buy it in any supermarket. It's porous quite soft and likely made of gypsum synthetically instead of volcanic rock. It has some strength, but it will likely disintegrate over time. This is gypsum and calcium silicate mix. Similar softness and toughness, similar properties overall. In this block you can see the crust, which has formed during curing. You can say that mixture was probably too wet. Inside is quite porous, that may help thermal properties a lot. And here you can see the bottom part with the spot that has been fired with torch. It's interesting to see how soft this material is when compared to the opposite side which have been fired. Now as I said earlier, this is the same material as previous block, but fused with a bit more sodium silicate. It has been fired from outside, but with a small torch, so it's quite hard to harden this thick piece thorough. Of Considering how badly this thing holds together, it's quite difficult to work with overall. These white specks you see here are calcium silicate particles. All bricks here are 50% calcium silicate by weight. This brick is alumina and calcium silicate. The crack you see here has been formed before curing by accident, so... Overall, it has very nice surface. However, this dust-like powder is most likely sodium carbonate that has crystallized. Nonetheless, underneath this powder is glass-like hard surface. This block broke easily probably due to some crack. In the next attempt much more effort was required. The inside is probably much softer and crumblier due to hydroxide preventing silicate to cure, but it's still pretty hard as you can hear. This block is made of superfine clay and calcium silicate. When surface of this clay hardens, it greatly inhibits further curing, so it's not too usable material overall. But it is super hard and abrasion resistant.
This cavity inside is caused by steam pushing on already hardened crust and it is pretty much unavoidable. In this last segment I will measure how hard you can press on these blocks with portable electronic scale before they shatter. So this sealant clay block can take 15 kilograms worth of material. Alumina block. 15 kilograms, no impression. Good stuff overall. This is mortar. Getting quite inconsistent readings, probably due to varying hardness of the surface. And again, mortar. About 1 kilogram of force to break the block. There is impression, so the integrity could be improved with some reinforcement or maybe hardening of the inside. Now, this is impressive how such brittle material can withstand so much pressure and basically at one point. Very good. And gypsum. Not good. Better. And impressive. So, conclusion. Yes, 